This is a 360 recording, which is designed for phones or tablets or VR headsets. If you want to watch it, remember that you have to hold your mouse down and move the cursor around with the mouse held down in order to change the view that you're looking at, or put your finger down on your phone or your tablet, hold your finger down and move the view around. If you don't want to watch this type of 360 presentation, there is a normal presentation which is in the description and that will not have the 360 effect. Can't, can't get rid of him. Right, let's try that again. This is the secret vault and that is a rotor bunker. And we're going to go and check it out. And this is an ALW exploration. Hello. He's also trying to copy my camera, so I'm not having this. So I'm copying him back. <laughs> There we are, right, cool. Well, let's go and check it out. This looks like it's gonna be a really interesting day. Also, we've got Zach, who said he doesn't mind being in camera, and Mr. Liam LK, who also doesn't mind being in camera. Although, if I film him like that, then I don't have to blur out my car anymore, which is a bore, but yeah. <laughs> let's go and check it out then. And Thomas, well, I didn't want to embarrass him. Are you he happy to right. be on camera? Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah, there you go, he's happy. That's all right then. As long as we've had a thumbs up. Don't like to get people on YouTube without their permission. <laughs> it's a right. pristine bunker. It is. I've never seen a road They've got a Vulcan on the wood there, but. <laughs> yeah. So here we are in the foyer of the bunker and they've got bits and pieces for sale. Right. Anybody do or don't want to be on film? Not me. Not them. Okay, I'll I'll blow you out. I don't, I, don't like, I don't like the photograph taken any time. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you have to have a driving license, yeah. yeah. I just Thank you. I've always been like that. Are you going to catch our cat? Cat. Okay. Okay, well. Okay, well. Bits and pieces. I love this video. An alarm panel. Is that like. Fire. Fire. Is that still like the original spec to what the book is? Probably, yeah. Well, I got some. There you go. So, oh, look. Oh, look. Sewage bell alarm. Sewage alarm. Yeah. You have to check out how they get rid of their sewage. Probably the same as before, but they have got a thing out the back. Because unlike the other bunkers where they just fire it in the air, they've actually got a spreader. How oh, did they spread it evenly around the ground? Well, it's a proper... It's, I don't know if it's working. Um, do you mind if I ask you? As long as you're not recording, mate. Okay, well, I'll, I'll have to ask you off camera then. The sewage thing out the back, was that because they got, like, cisterns here and they used to feed it up and then they would spread it? No, I don't spread it. No. So it's not one of those um, spray systems like they have in some of the bunkers where in an emergency they just fire it in the air? No? So they would be treating it on that thing. Okay. Just interested. Thank you. Do you want to be on film or not? No, I'm not bothered. Okay, you're not too worried. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I've Probably been on one before. Added too many times now, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know. Yeah, film it out down the Oh, straight in then. Straight in. Okay. First fight, fight for the <laughs> privilege of being in. Oh, yeah. Right, so straight inside. There's a crane straight away. Straight away, crane. And it's a one one floor, so it might be a very large one floor then, as yes. opposed to a double floor. Yeah, I don't know if this is a double height one. No, no, it looks like this is similar to Goldsman. Right. 
single flight. This was like the London area, that was the garage where you get a lot of joints into. Yeah. Bring them down that voice for and that's uh, Thomas who's got a channel. What's your, what's your channel called? Thomas's Gaming Adventures. There you go. Check him out. Check him out. Like, subscribe. Thank you very much. All right. Look, photos and videos. Welcome. There you go. Police forces and security guards everywhere. Oh, look. They're, they're well prepared for uh, people that can't walk very well. Wheelchair accessibility then. What he said. <laughs> right, smoking, smoking strictly prohibited. Wow. But I'm more interested in wow. It's a pretty retro corridor. It is, yeah. It's a very long way away from the uh, guardhouse as well. Oh my god. Yeah. So this is sort of like a Kelvin and Hatchfield, but without any of the any of the like extra frills and museum-y bits. So this is uh, what a place looks like. Now these are interesting because they're almost. I wonder if these were put here for the uh, MOD as well. Is that part of the AC? Dehumidifiers. Keep the moisture up, keep it nice and dry. That's probably like soap steam inside and not all like corroded, like the yep. conduit and stuff. Yeah. And it might be cheaper to run these than to run some of the main equipment. Modern? Yeah, maybe the interfills as well, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm seeing something weird here. Have you spotted it? Like a pull cord, like an alarm pull cord. The trough along the edge. No. There's an, there's an alarm pull cord, look. Oh, yeah. What, what does that connect to? Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. We we're talking about this thing, yeah. Well, I don't know if you should pull it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no. This is Jordan, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a yes to Jordan. It feels so tempting, just go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You've got a neck gear router. Back into the MOD, look, folks. I don't think that's straight, original. Straight through to London to the Prime Minister. Patch <laughs> into it. Let's have, let's add a Wi Fi connection onto it. Yeah. Do you think those are original, those speakers on the walls? It might be, yeah. They look very old fashioned and wooden and they're like directional, so they're like triangle, aren't they? So there's a speaker at each. Yeah. Here we go, look, there's even a little thing for Ooh. a cat. Now I wonder if that's original. Cat flap. Cat flap. Wow. Boiler force cat. Yeah, there's somebody, somebody trying to come through. Just let him go through. I would have said, did you let me hold the down? There you go. Oh, thanks okay. very much. Thank much Cheers. Much. Is that original, that cat flap? Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> Is it really? No. Oh, okay. Um, the first owner, um, once it went into private hands, had a cat. Ah, that's fine. And he yeah, put some uh, cat flaps in the doors. Thankfully, not in the, in the glass doors, right. but just in the... And, and this little rope thing, it looks like an emergency pull cord, is it, for some sort now of emergency? That, I couldn't tell you about that. You would ah. have to ask, um, there will be John downstairs in the plant room. Right. Or um, Ted or Arthur in the nuclear reporting cell. Right. So this is a two-floor bunker then? Yes. It goes yes. down? Oh, yes, wow. yes, yes, okay. it's an three. Great. Excellent. Okay, do thank, you, thank you very you much. Thank you for the information. Thank Cheers. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Thanks. You can see how that is an escape hatch because it goes up ladders straight to the surface. Right. Wow. Yeah. You can hear Mars just going on in the background, can't you? Yep. Civilian cleaners. Aye, aye. You actually call them civilian cleaners because they're not employed by MOD, are they? Yeah. Like, they haven't got like, any waves or anything. Oh, ham radio shack. That's all modern equipment, is that? Yeah, relatively. Some of those ham radio things over there are from the 1980s, 1970s. Did you actually run into a yeah. upstairs? That's, that's a more modern one there, and that's a yeah, waterfall yeah. display um, uh, SDR radio over there. Did you 
think they're running out of theatre? Yeah, well, those. I wondered when I saw the antennas outside whether or not this was actually a, a ham radio station, and it looks like it is. Jim C B. Mm. Yeah. So they may have people come down here to operate ham radio nights, or it may just be for show. I don't know, but it looks a bit too professional to just be for show. Nah, I think they do like ham radio sessions, like talk loops. Yeah. And talk shows. Right here's the blast stores. Oh, hello. Ultra wide. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> People see a camera and they can get very yeah, shy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh wow, it all lifts up this floor. Mm. There's like ventilation ducting and stuff underneath it potentially. It could be, yeah, and it, it all comes up like each bit of it. Yeah. And unlike some of the bunkers where you have like a little hatch and then you have to crawl along, it looks like all the floors come up. For Everything comes service. up. Yeah. Look, this is where the wire goes. Oh, and in fact. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it for a skirt then, do you think? Smoke skirt. Ooh. To rescue people going yeah, but, in. But, but like that, you couldn't actually do anything with it yeah, because it's tied it's off. Tied here, here, isn't it? So oh, you know what it is? In the dark, hold on to the rope, keep pulling yourself along in the smoke so you, you can't see, but you can just keep coming along until you feel that and that's how you in the smoke. It. Yeah, yeah. to help you navigate. So that's... rescue people, get that and go in with it. Yes. To get people out. I like, never thought of that. Oh my god, yep. that's actually quite smart, isn't it? Yeah. Basically effective. Old fashioned technology, so they don't have to buy smoke hoods, they just get a bit of rope and just like, <laughs> just walk along in the dark. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Good, good. It's solid. We're the, we're the crazy film crew with like far too many cameras. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to look at some uh, weapons, Thomas? This is the yeah, best way cool. to work our way and then down the second, the yeah, last, is it? Yeah, there is a shot video in there for about 10 minutes. Okay. Just giving you insight about this and everything. Okay. If that's copyright, I won't put it on here, but yeah. Okay, thanks very much then. And these um, floors that were outside, you know the ones that flip up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, are they um, just for servicing cables and things? Yes. Yeah. It's about five foot. Right, three. okay. Yeah, the same ones will there. Oh, yeah. You'll see them as you go along. Yeah, we've yeah. seen these ones in other bunkers where you, it's a crawl space, you can actually crawl all the way along, is it? Yeah. 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 Okay, great, thank you. There you go. It's the. Maybe the play radio. So it is a two floor bunker after all. We didn't think it was when we first came in, but now we can see it's a, it's a rotor bunker within a rotor bunker sort of thing. Oh, yeah, intercom here. It's intercom. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> Could you imagine down intercom look? Yeah, yeah. But, so, what do you think that is there? We were just having a quick discussion about that. That's that it. is just a tape recorder. What, in a big box? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you might um, you might use it for recording interviews in a in a cell or something. But they're normally two tapes, but you never know. So here's all the keys. Oh, safety key box. And look, it's got two, two keys that we can put in. We've got an AP position and a CP position. Yeah, yeah. Well, my suggestion is it might be a good idea for us to split off because from audio purposes, you know, we yeah. just end up wrecking each other's audio, otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a bow fan yeah. there. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. Do you know, George? I'm not saying George. No, no. I can't believe that. There's a bow fan there. Yeah, yeah. No, this way. This way. Bloody hell. It's a bit, it's a bit armoured up, isn't it? We'll all be like decommissioned, but weapons, I won't, but... Yeah. Are they real decommissioned ones or just um, show pieces? Uh, a lot of them are decommissioned ones. Right. And... Uh, Rest of them are airsoft, just to give yes. you a, an idea. An yeah. idea of... Oh, great. Never seen arms in a bunker before like this. I've seen where well, they have got nuclear weapons in Hat Green. <laughs> They've actually got a trident missile and some bombs. But, you know, yeah. But no, not all of these, you know, would have been in the bunker at the time. Yes. Hello there. Oh, all right. It's just... Uh, 
reflection on what would be in the Cold War at the time. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Stengens. Wow, goodness, it's getting bigger. Bigger stuff. And this as well, bloody hell. Look, precision. Precision aiming on the back. You've got a little little range thing to lift and lower the gun and angle angles. So that's like for either sniper shooting or distance distance and top loading as well. You know, to make it easier for you when you're operating in this mode. Top loader. Not that T opens whenever I was up Yeah, it's a missile. It's a Russian Russian missile. Hmm. Yeah, hand launch, hand rocket launcher. Yeah. Oh, slightly more modern than these, look. Yeah. I can't believe it's just a bow fan on the side there. Yeah. <laughs> And it's something that somebody's working on here, by the looks. Wow. And it says firing range is open. I wonder what they mean. Right. So do you want to split off so that we uh, we can get all get a bit of um, cleaner audio? If you want. And, I'll, and we'll meet at the end or something or halfway through. Thank you. Now I can tell you about the rope. The rope? The rope and the tunnel. Oh yes, we kind of had a guess that it was, if it, if it was filled with smoke, you'd Fire. hold on. You'd hold on and, and you'd walk your way. Continue to take you. Yeah. yeah. That's what we like, it's a good mystery, and then we get it solved. Yeah, so, yeah. You know. And is that actually a breathing thing at the end, so that somebody can put it, put a mask on and come in to help people? Because there's actually a little, little box at the end as well. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Mysteries being solved all the time. Well, yeah. you know, it's always good. Yeah. I believe that one person would hold, would have the rope. Ah. If, if you're so it's not looking a, it's the just there, rope. Yeah. It is just rope. Yeah. So that you've got you're attached to the wall and you are you can go then in. Yes. you you're still attached here. Yes. You've got that bag, so you've got your lead out. Right. Back into your corridor. Makes sense. I didn't want to like pick it up and start looking at it but yeah now that makes sense great yeah. thank you thanks very much Ooh, oh yes they've got the floor projectors wow they've got the floor projectors to be fit for purpose for its new task, the bunker has changed dramatically. Almost all traces of its radar years associated equipment wow. removed and scrapped. This is, this is really cool. Was in charge of distributing supplies. So you can actually walk down from over there and get down onto this and then Everything push the stuff around on the, uh, on the screens. In peacetime, support command was located in a service building to park at Brampton. It more seemed likely than yeah, this is this is a bit more authentic, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. The bucket was internally remodeled to fit with this new rubber. For the first time, provisions may have personnel to survive in the bunker in a post-nuclear strike environment. So these are status. The status indicators for enough to last the eighty or so stars. Probably aircraft. For the first time, beds were brought into the bunker, with areas allocated to officers and regular male and female staff. A kitchen and canteen were built, and a little room really set as well for the people there was maybe a complete in the control. Wire, an and a special survey, and a new ventilation system was installed. Or maybe it's because they didn't the bring this switch room and they did a briefing. This was the nuclear reporting cell. The observers collected information on nuclear detonations and radiation levels from other bunkers in the Royal Observer Corps network and used this information to advise the support command staff as to which areas it was safe to dispatch supplies to. 
The bucket during the 1980s was maintained by only a few personnel. Wow. Just enough to keep the bucket It's red telephones over here, the like uh, they look like they go to the, and it remained this way you know, until the, end of the, cold the Prime Minister or something. Pretty impressive. But why is he got this here? What's this about? It's like um, when you start a nuclear war, you can have him. Like, oh, in heaven. <laughs> Please forgive us for sending tridents to Russia. We will now be good again. You know, is that what that's for? It's a bit weird, isn't it? However, this was yeah. a short-lived project. There's a video projector up there. Um, the stage lights. So, bringing to an end yeah. the 70 years of service by the volunteers of the Royal wow. Reserve Corps. After 1995, the only saw occasional use. And an MOD could now, there's the Help for Heroes and uh, various wreaths here. So I wonder if they've had a presentation in here recently. The first time, initially, only a few rooms were available to view. Right, they're going downstairs. I'm going to do the. I'm going to do the top floor. Well, there we are. Security and weapons issue. Look. Light, something that will flash. Wow. So you can feel the, uh, you can see, you can feel the air coming in from somewhere. So it's almost like as if they've got the actual, they've got these working. It stopped now. It was on, but it stopped. Security is your responsibility. So yeah, you can go in these rooms, but not not too far, not too far in. This is what you should do if you are out of doors when the war starts. Take cover at once when you hear the attack starts. So yeah, this is where you would be getting patched up and mortuary for when you smelt one of Jordan's parts. Yeah, that's where they put you. Ooh, right. What is that? Air Force Control Room. No admittance to unauthorized persons. What? What, what, what? Are you serious? Are you serious? You're not actually allowed to go in here. No, it's locked. It's locked. Control Room. I wonder what's in there then. What the hell? Mm. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you should recognize these over here. These are the telephones that are connected to the handle network. And the handle network was this dual wire system, which means that if one wire got cut from one direction, another wire would connect. And it was for, for the um, reporting of nuclear launches so that we were at war. And uh, you'd have two telephones to listen on and one phone to ring back to headquarters to, to ask any questions. There we are, like it says, wire broadcast system. There you go. And it actually says up there, look. it says handle. I didn't reckon, I didn't see that. Handle, BT Marshall, Marshall 17. So there we go. So what's this then? Coding and encryption. So look, you've got a proper, proper thing there. You know, and the people inside can can see who's outside. Look. So they can check on you before they let you in. It's a very important room. It's where they keep all the equipment to uh, decode messages and provide keys to radios and computers so that they're encrypted. So this is where it'd be, all that work would have gone on. Yeah, oops, a daisy. Don't press the button to go up, Matt. Yeah. So that's amazing. There you go. Oops. Oops. That's the med 
this in room. So we've got uh, information wall. This in priority message it says, Ops guard room, Royal Worship to His Royal Worship, the Right Honorable Captain Haywell, sir. To me, <laughs> it's, oh, yeah, secret originate is number 007, so it's a bit of a, a bit of a joke. One, really. Oh, look, oh my god, look at this. I know what that means. I know what that means up there. Let's just have a let's just have a little gander look. From Ministry of Defence, Conrad Cop, Info, RAF, HQ, PSS UK. HQ, PSS UK. What's H HQ, PSS? HQ, PSS is H Cop, HQ, Provost and Security Service. And the HQ, Pro Provost and Security Service was at Rudlow Manor. Caution. Yeah, very important place, Corsham. Yeah, even though they used to play it down, but they didn't do anything, there was nothing happening there. Oh, yeah, it was. We know they lie. Ooh. These rooms on the corridor were the executive office for the higher ranking personnel in the bunker. The rooms to the right were the registry admin and Mullah radar systems. When the bunker was refitted for the support command role in 1980, this whole corridor became the officers' sleeping quarters. Officers' rooms were equipped with overhead, overbed lights and electric razor sockets. Wet shaving would not be allowed in wartime to conserve water. Are we allowed to go in? Oh, apparently not, no. So we can't go into some sections, a bit of a shame. Oh, no. And. We've got a cat flap, cat flap. So this is probably like somebody's house then, I suppose. It's a shame we can't go in some bits. Oh, we'll have to ask and see whether we're allowed. So they allow us in here, but this doesn't look very exciting. But this is allowed. <laughs> so, but we're not allowed in here. This is very, no, not allowed in the showers. Quite right too. I might want to have one. You might want to take a shower. That would be not allowed. Yeah. So here's the old uh, station. Should be recording again now. I don't know why it said it stopped, but uh, it's got a mind of its own. That bloody camera, so you never know what's going to happen next. All right. Ooh. Delivering information to fit the defence. Ooh, situation room and executive office. So, situation room and executive office. So this area contains the accommodation for executive officer for the bunker's commander. The situation room is where the commanding officer would brief his staff during wartime. These rooms as we see them today date from the 1980s support command refit. Wow, here we go. So, I would say basic utilitarian, but not exactly modern. Um, they didn't, the, the, the MOD don't seem to want to spend the money to kind of like really jazz things up. It's not like the United States where this would all be sort of like, you know, mad custom stuff. And I mean, even the lighting is kind of very, very British. Let's just put it like that, very British. Very British. 
let's reuse these seeds. We don't want to get rid of them. We've got some, we've got some value. So here we are. Domain and Jetstream resources. There we are. Number of aircraft available, serial numbers of aircraft, regional and zone air squadrons, right. damage and casualty reports, this is, and search and rescue assets in the UK. So, yeah. They, they list good old RAF St. Athen, which is in South Wales, which is where I used to live. So, yeah. What about that? Smoking not prohib is prohibited in this uh, room. Yeah, I like the old, uh, I like the old Royal Air Force logo up there. Sure, sure saves the uh, expense of getting a video projector, eh, RAF? But it's interesting to see this is how it it kind of was done. Um, but it's not as modern as you would think, is it? Really isn't. You know, they were, they were kind of doing things in a very much more, you know, sedate way. Not to, not to upmarket. And there we are. Have the boards there, they can move around, put information on the boards. Good map, map on the wall. Of different, yeah, the main road route system. NW, North East, Wales, W District, East District, South West District, South East District, main roads. And they would be wanted to keep these open, whilst all the small roads they probably didn't care about, but there we are. Mm. And this would be one of those rooms that we couldn't see because that corridor was closed. But uh, we can see it here now, it's actually visible. And uh, just a small bed and it's kind of hard to see in there because we can't get close, but yeah, you know, you've got your, your books, bookshelves, and a suit hanging out on the door. Let me have a look. Wow, what's this then? Hemel Hempstead, Boreham Wood, this is like London, Orpington, it's a map of London, and the postcodes of London. So that's what's on that. Okay, well, let's have a little look then. Right. So that's the kitchen, which is closed. Oh, look. This is a key to get you into the floor spaces. So these uh, crawl spaces in the floor, that would be to lift those up to get them get them out. So, here we are, look. Ask about joining officers of the Civil Defence Corps. Ask the nearest fire station about joining the Auxiliary Fire Service. You know it makes sense. And what's this? This is something you put around your arm so that you don't get shot whilst everybody else gets told what to do in an emergency. They'll be telling you what to do. If you've got one of these on your arms, you've got special privileges. Mm. Oh, here we go. It doesn't say... Well, it's obviously... A, it looks like a kitchen, but with a private table in the kitchen. It should be a bit noisy, really, when you think about it, wouldn't it? If you did have a private table in the kitchen, cooking the food, Mmm. Okay, we'll do. I'll give that a go then. Right, let's make sure it's recording. And there, is a, there is a bar downstairs. Right. Okay. Cool. I know there's, there's a lot of places not open. I wanted to go and see these um, dorm quarters for the for the officers, and it's all closed. No, there's uh, this floor on the right hand side. There's a door, and it says like this would be the the quarters for senior staff and. All that sort of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, LK Computers, folks. Liam LK, check him out. Right now we've got cinema room. So cinema room there. Okay. I don't know what this is. This looks interesting. Right, emergency exit. Caution glass. And we've got the back end. 
back end stuff. Okay, and that's the recirculation fan room. Right, and that's the female toilets down there. Female toilets. No, can And here. So you are just as safe in your own home area as anywhere else. In fact, you are far better off at home because it is the place you know and where you are known. Right, so is this open? I bet it's not. Nope. So what's in there? Oops, a daisy. What's in there then? Your local authority may take it over for homeless. I don't know. And if you move, emergency the exit. Of the new place will not help you with food, okay. accommodation, or other attentions. You are better off in your own home. Is that a is that a secret section not normally open? No, it's never open this. Never open. Is it a what, what does it do? It's just a tunnel that goes to ladders. Oh, is it's it? It's a ladder that goes oh, onto hatch. Oh, it goes to the surface. Ah, oh, right, okay. Thanks. You can see it from outside. Brilliant. Oh, cinema. Where people are eating contaminated food. Where you look. We start getting very excited because a scientist might say, well, 200 people out of a million. Of course, oh, loading, yeah. What's going on? May die of kidneys. These are the kids. Nuclear war. Kids all over the place. Being exchanged for the facts that we live with today. Present planning does not. Oh, bloody hell! This stuff, folks. Wow. What the heck? What the heck is this all about? Probably thousands of secrets. Yeah. So look, you can just walk down, literally walk down these stairs into the separate section. And it's a gallery. It's got somebody's. Uh, somebody's artwork. Which I'm assuming you might be able to buy. So there we go. So turn this bunker. And that's the door up into the section we've just come from. And turn this section into an art gallery. And uh, here we are overlooking overlooking some of the uh, some of the lower rooms. Which I don't know whether you can get into or not. Which we'll have to see. Oh yes, there's a stairs. See? I didn't realise there's a stairs over there. Whoa. So on this side we've got telex machines. Oh, telex and, and other stuff as well. So it looks quite nice. And it's just lots and lots of teleprinters and telexes look. Let's go down and check it out properly then. Uh, oh, you can't go into this room. Not, not allowed to go in the telex room and the radio room. So there's some areas you can't go into. Right. Oh. right. Lots of uh, notes. Notes and messages being left by people. Yeah. Right. So we're into the ventilation spaces which are beneath the floor. So basically, a lot of this floor has been pulled up, and this would be the original, uh, original setup for it here. You can see all the vents, very much like uh, St. Twinnell's not messed with, actual com complete, proper, nice to look at. And also, as you can see, above us, the ventilation shafts, ventilation shafts there, looking quite good condition actually. So there you go. But yeah, somebody's making a really good opportunity 
of uh, putting their paintings on display. <laughs> and why not? If you've got your own bunker, why not? Yes. Oh, no! I think that's World War Three. World War Three has just started. <laughs> You're right. No, I haven't been done that bit yet. Let's check this out. So we have a steps up into another section. And uh, so I don't know why they pulled all the floor up. Maybe the uh, MOD, when they left, they wanted to make sure all the wires were out and everything was taken. You know, so they ripped everything up like this and then didn't put it back. And maybe that's why. Maybe that's why it's kind of how it is as we see it now. Yeah. There we are, look, senior aircraft woman. Senior aircraft woman, Trish Altoft. There we are. Look, senior aircraft woman, Janet Leavesley. She was, uh, she was here in 1967, age 17. And she worked until 1972. So five years she was here. Yeah. Yeah, so various people who visited the bunker, these are. People who worked in the bunker. Okay, and actually came back to check out what it what it's doing now. So that's the, the wall of everyone who uh, everyone who worked here. That's quite interesting, isn't it? We've got the uh, recorded voices at this end of people who worked here. Yeah. Yeah. Senior aircraftman Vernon Kell. Vernon Kell. Yeah, the Royal Observer Corps staff. So this is showing like a Royal Observer Corps bunker with an extendable, extendable uh, antenna. There you go. And they've got um, got a little uh, show on here. Oh, we've been we've been to bunkers like this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You know where that is, don't you? You know where that is, folks. That looks like RAF Twinnels. St. Twinnels. That looks exactly like St. Twinnels. I wonder if this was St. Twinnels. I don't think we were warned. I think all of a sudden, all these alarms. Whether they're all the same. This is right, you know, everybody lined up. They're always down in the engineering department right at the bottom. Amazing. Here he is. It looks very like the St. Twinnels bunker that we went to in West Wales. There was uh, there's a thing showing showing what it was like to be inside here. But... Mm. Behind this in this room, then you know. That room's amazing. It's a bar in there. Mm. Oh look, DSIO room, control cabin number one. Wow! Look at this, folks. Who'd have thought that, eh? Who'd have thought this would have been down here? What the hell? What the hell? Look how swanky this is. Look, oak panel walls or something similar. Wow. 
Get yourself a pint, folks. Get yourself a pint, look. Wow. Wow. People playing games down here as well. People actually playing games. unwind and relax in between their shifts whilst being overlooked at all times to make sure that nobody was being in any way naughty by Her Maj Her Majesty, yes you know it she'll watch you and make sure you're not naughty make sure you follow those orders yeah, you don't drink too much the inner refuge should be thickly lined. Oh, you can go into some of these rooms then. Slightly. Yeah, telex messages. There we are. GPO, government, government post office, issue, telex machines. There we go. So this takes you out up the stairs to the top floor. So... That's where we saw earlier on, so we're not going to go up just yet. Ooh, because there's a corridor. But let's take the other way to the corridor. But look, this is a drainage pump. Engineering. Only authorised persons allowed to enter. And you cannot see anything. Oh dear, that's a shame, isn't it? I was hoping we were going to get a little bit of an explanation of what things were, but... Well, it isn't, and this is a museum, there's, we're not, there's no exploring here, everybody can see everything. Yes, yeah, okay, yeah. alright then. So, yeah, uh, look, you can come in and look. I can come in and look, but, yeah. But we can't stop the museum activities. So. No, no, I didn't no. expect it, I no. didn't expect that, I thought you were giving a, a little tour or something. Anyway, nice to chat to you too. We do have a chat with Arthur and Carl.
shame, isn't it? Some people, some people uh, like having a chat, and some people don't like having a chat. <laughs> oh well, never mind. He might change his mind, but somehow I don't think so. But there we go. Oh well. What can we do down here then? What can we look at? We can go into this area. Okay. Wow. It's interesting. Differential pressure. Dripping in here, actually, it's the water or something going through it. But, yeah, L. Stern and Co. Engineers, the Crown Ironworks, Glasgow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think it's just too intimidating cameras. Unfortunately, so let's have a look around here then. So it's an apparatus plant filter battery. That's, I think that's where all the filters are on the right hand side. There's just a big bank of them. It goes down there. But, uh, yeah. That's a sump, I assume, under there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Hello, Sally, how are you doing? I'm all right. That's why you were talking to the same lady earlier. Yes. So, I'm going to go and show up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hello, Sally. 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 This is the uh, back into the, the games room corridor, so we'll come back into this room because there's a lot of kids. So, billeting. Billeting, so maybe hotbeds, a bit swap, and uh, somewhere to put your stuff. Locker rooms. After a nuclear attack, you may not be able to use your lounge because there might not be enough water to flush it or the whole system might be damaged. Ooh, right. Have so well, a look what we've got down here. Ooh. Support. Support command. Aria SCSS Manning State. Oh, hello. <laughs> Crum crumpy fucker in there. I was like, he came into the room and I said, oh, um, do you, are you telling people about this room? And he goes, no, no. And I don't want to be on film. So, uh, for oh, film in the sake. Room. Yeah. Yeah. Crumpy. He said that to me before. Crumpy fuck. Anyway, that will get edited, but yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh yeah, Telephone Exchanges and Communication Centre. So what's this then? Expansion Unit. Mm. Now this, this stuff here, Symbol Lock, Symbol Lock, is for encryption. A symbol is what I believe they put in to kind of um, put the codes in for the encryption. So, I think that's what it is. So it's saying the Manning State here, you've got Abingdon, Bigging Hill, Brampton, Carlisle, Chilmark, 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 Church Fenton, Cosford, Cranwell, Finningley, Halton, Harrogate, Hendon, Henlow, oh yes, we know about the bunker at Henlow, oh yes, Innsworth, Leeming, Linton on Ouse, Locking, Newton, Luffenham, Okanga, Okanga, which is now privately owned and is a data centre. 
uh, Quedgley, Sealand, 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 Sealand was a place that they bloody had out in the sea, you know, the, the pirates had it. Shawbury, Stafford, St. Athan, that's where I used to live, next to St. Athan. Um, hello, Jason, by the way. Hello, St. Athan. Swinton Morley, Thatcham, Uxbridge, Valley, Rawton. Oh my God, this must be old. Rawton, RAF Rawton, that's super old. That's right where I live. And that is not used as an airfield anymore. It's privately owned and it's now owned by the Science Museum who keep exhibits that are too big to hold in London, such as aircraft and tanks. So that's all at Rawton. Hereford and Scampton. So this is it's a very old list, basically. Very old. So what have we got here? We've got a BT Regent, Regent Rack Mount Telephone Exchange. There we go. So, yeah. Make it big, charge them lots of money. Yeah. Merlin DX, Merlin Telephone Exchange. Yeah, indeed. Oh, the 3D is bleeping at me. That could be telling me it's too hot again. So. Wow, telephone exchange. That's interesting, isn't it? Telephone exchange. Now, I'm just going to check my status of my 3D. 360, I mean, that's right. Oh, that's okay. What's it saying? I think it's basically saying it's too hot. Two minutes of filming and it starts having a panic attack. It never used to because I have filmed all day. All day on that bloody thing and a new firmware release and suddenly <coughs> all goes to shit. It's now overheating and can't can't work properly. Yeah. Firmware updates. This is why I tell people don't do firmware updates because it corrupted all my files yesterday, so I lost everything. So I filmed the whole event and it didn't come out. Firmware updates, now it's overheating. Great, thank you very much. Just what we needed. Well, hopefully you're still seeing this in 360. Well, ComSen, Com Center. Com Center. Mm. And support command, wow, it's a big room. Wow. Wow. This is the biz. Com center. Look. Wow. Operation Pit. Ops Pit. Wow. There we go. Look at these. They've got blue. Blue lights. Blue lights. Yeah. I don't know why they want blue lights in there, but makes them feel good, makes them feel cool, makes them feel important. Why not? Ooh, what's this then? Briefing area. So yeah, they'd have briefings in this room. It's a briefing area. Well, it was about this sort of time when I got harassed by the owner of the bunker. That was the guy who was in the room who didn't want to speak to me. And he told me that I wasn't allowed to have lights on with my camera. And then he got quite nasty, gritted his teeth, and he was like, no lights, or something like that. Anyway, if you want to see that, uh, watch the other video, which is the non-360. Anyway, after that, I got pretty pissed off and decided it was time to leave. I basically filmed everything, but he kind of put me on a downer, so I left. Right then, let's go to the big, big tunnel. This is not an this is not an explore, this is a museum. Wow. I was told I could film. Hello there. Back on the corridor again. Yeah. Have you enjoyed yourself? It was really nice, yes. I got told off though because I had my light on. Apparently it's just like contraband. Oh, 
on the video, see if I was being ridiculously unreasonable by having my lights on. You know, the trouble is, human eyes see really well in low light. Cameras do not see really well in low light. So cameras require light. But there we go. I'm going to film and make it look crap, and let's not use light. So I want it to look good, we use light. Never mind. Okay folks, never mind that. That is just par for the course. So that's it folks. We're going to head off out now. And, oh, hello there. So I might get a cup of tea and then we'll go outside and we'll have a look. Inside. We've drone flown it though, but it can't, it's not that close. No. Is that all right? Um, I think so. Yeah. So yeah. it says Google Earth. It's just uh, you don't want people, you don't want cameras and security. Well, well, things, well, yeah. is, people think, oh, well, they've got that. Why can't we put on that? Right. Uh, yeah. So it's just to stop people coming yeah. down. Yeah. You know, I will see how many people have gone around taking photos. Yeah. Or, you can very often put the sign on. Yeah. But, you know, not around the back of So, you, you know, I could put a note on the drone footage to say, you know, do not come without permission onto the grounds if you want. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, I've been asked to uh, say, even though the site may look easy to access and walk on, uh, don't go on there without permission and uh, please don't fly a drone without their permission so I've done my bit thanks very much